Uh, first of all, guys, this is Wars of Succession. It's the most recent addition to the AG Odds catalog, and it's awesome as always, as all AG Odd games are. We're going to be launching a new game over here, and we have a few choices. We've got, of course, the Grand Campaign. A lot of you guys are talking about Peter the Great, etc., and of course, the Swedish Empire. Um, we also have the Italian Scenario, and this allows us to play as the Bourbons against the Grand Alliance. This is the shortest campaign in the game. We've also got the Major Campaign here, 175 turns, and this is the War of Spanish Succession. Um, so actually, I know that a lot of uh, Spanish people are looking forward to this particular title because there are a lot of Spanish wars here that you can play as. Today, we're going to be playing as uh, the uh, Bourbons in the Italy scenario and trying to defend Milan and the surrounding Italian uh, sort of uh, principalities from the Austrians. Let's see if we can do it, guys. All right, so as you can see here, this is a small campaign scenario starting in the early summer, summer of 1701 when Prince Eugene of Savoy, military commander of the Austrian forces, provoked French military involvement by invading the Duchy of Milan and started the real fighting of the Spanish Succession War. So we've got Venezia here, we've got all this. Now, right now, um, our guys are locked. There's not much we can do. You can actually see each individual unit there. That's just, oh, it's so cool. And if you look down here, the, the actual portraits, the portraits are always well done by the AG Odds team, but they really went out of their way with this one. Uh, we've also got a large, large army here led by Katina. Um, but overall, this is what we're defending is Milano. And we're going to have to wait for these armies to unlock. Right now, there's really not much we can do. But one thing I love is the show owner of all regions button. So you can see that each of these Italian states were basically their own duchies at this time. You know, this was not, Italy did not come about for about 150 years. Um, we've got the Duchy of Parma, the Duchy of Modena. This would make uh, somebody very happy. Um, the Duchy of uh, Modena down here, etc. So we're in control of the Duchy of Mantova and of course the Duchy of Milano, which stretches all throughout this area up here of Lombardy. So let's go ahead and end the turn. Let's turn it over to, let's turn it over, no pun intended, um, to the Austrians and let's see what they do. Prepare your muskets, men, to defend the French Empire. And yes, this is under French control. It's the way it was these days. Oh my goodness, that's a massive army. So guys, I put the delay button there at the Battle of Cremona. What that means is that you can kind of hear the battle going on for a while, um, but you can actually turn that completely off so that the battle is immediately resolved. I just like to hear it. And as you can see, we lost 3,428 men. They only lost 1,983. And overall, we were defeated at this battle. Now, if we want to get a detailed battle report, which I definitely do, we can actually take a look here. And look at this, the Max Sturmberg Battalion. Uh, we've got the sales garrisons. We've got a lot of garrison units here, but it's so cool to be able to look through all of these beautifully drawn units. The young Han Hanover um, cavalry regiments, they almost look like roundheads from the English Civil War. Um, and as you can see there, the enemy definitely won that battle. We've got to come back strong in the next engagement. So right now he's stuck in between. This leads to a potential strategic opportunity. So we've got the army of Lombardy, led by Villeroi, and we've also got Aguilar here from the uh, the Ezercito de Milano, and this, these guys are actually um, Spaniards. So there's quite a lot of different countries fighting in this campaign, and I think what I want to do is merge both of these armies, if the game will let me. There we go. And the command power should be enough uh, for this to work out just fine. Yup, sure enough, Villeroi is doing fine on command power, and this should be enough to beat the enemy, uh, Eugene. But I want—I don't want to jump right into battle. I just want to get up close and personal. And I want to make sure that my men will not retreat under any circumstances. Uh, but we're not going to go on the attack formation. And for Katina, I guess all I can do is have him wait. Do your best, Katina. I don't think he can build any sort of fortification, unfortunately for him. Nope. Let's go ahead and end the turn. be surprised if Eugene goes down 
uh, to the south. I think he's going to have to go west to Lodi, but you never know with these Austrians. They're very, very good at strategy, and I think he realizes, yeah, he's got to pull back. He's going to probably attack Katina one more time. Oh, that's going to hurt. Hold on, son. Oh my goodness, wow. Well, a nasty loss for our side once again, but hey, this is what how war is fought uh, in this particular time period. And look at these excellent portraits. We've got Thomas de Lorraine, Henri de Lorraine, uh, Wold Rudiger. So we've actually got um, some French fighting on the enemy side as well. There were so many different sort of mixes here in this time period. Let's go ahead and get out of that. And I think we're gonna have to attack Eugene because at this point he's taken Montava from us. Um, and we're going to have to do something about it. So I really want to merge these two armies together, and I think we can, but it's going to take a while. Um, and in the meantime, I might have to leave Milan open. Unless Katina can get here this way. 21 days, that would be perfect. Let's go, Katina. Start marching now, son. If we can build some sort of uh, defensive fort here, I will, but I don't think we can. Let's take a look. Uh, we could actually build a depot, so I'm going to go ahead and do that while we wait. And of course, since this is a shorter scenario, there are no historical options or anything like that, although we do have the typical menu here. Um, we do have the death of James II. We can eventually unlock the James III event, but right now we don't have to worry about that. We'll come back to this later uh, for sure in the stream. Let's proceed to the next turn. So I think he's going to try to stock up there in the fort. If That's what I would do if I was on the defense. And at that point, we need to try and do a major attack uh, to take back that area. We can't just let the Austrians have it. For Milan, come on, man. Also, just a huge hello to everybody in the stream. I, I really wanted to just focus on this particular screen, guys, for um, at least 30, 40 minutes. Uh, and then I will absolutely check out the uh, stuff in the stream. But, uh, you know, Muso can keep me updated on anything important while he keeps you rascals in check. It's a little strange. I haven't seen this yet. Okay, here we go, guys. Let's try that again. Um, so once again, we're going to take Katina. And if it doesn't work this time, we'll just start a new campaign. We may have corrupted the file uh, with my mismanagement. Uh, I do want to go back to our overlay here that will show the owner of all regions. There are, of course, other overlays like supply overlays, who's controlling the strategic towns, allegiances. Uh, you know, you want to look through those if you're going to be playing a major scenario. But in this particular case, we're playing a smaller one. We pretty much know where the enemy is. They're all to the east. Everything to the east of us is the enemy, um, and that's what we need to focus on. Here we go. You can do nothing, Eugene, to stop us. All right, I think Katina made it there this time. I'm not even sure if he's going to be able to go into that army. He might just have too large of a force, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay, there we go. And now look at this difference. Well, actually, we can't see how many men they have. They could have a lot more. Um, so I'm putting my guys on a full offensive towards Mantova. This is not nice to the people of Mantova because obviously we're going to probably destroy their city if my offensive works. But desperate times call for desperate measures. And we are charging into what is now Austrian territory to try and get some revenge for our fallen men. Come on, men. No retreat. I've actually put the order on no retreat, so let's hope this works out, because if it doesn't, we're going to lose a lot of guys. There we go. Come on, Villeroy. I think he's definitely going to take that area. And what's that? Are they going to be sending down some mercenaries or reinforcements? Probably. 
Here we go. We are charging Mantova. Great for victory. Oh, this is a massive battle. Come on, boys. Please, guys, we can win this. We can win this one. This one is taking a really long time. I love it. Well, I'm not sure if it's going to be a victory. It seems like it took too long for it to be a victory. We'll have to wait and see. A French defeat. Oh, and we lost 10,798 men. Oh my goodness, I definitely want to look at the detailed battle report. Now, keep in mind, we're charging a fortified position um, in my defense. That's not easy to do. Um, so as you can see here, we lost a lot of men. We also killed a lot of the enemy. Um, and they have a significantly smaller force than us, so I think we just need to come back. I love these uh, units, the Lanceron, the Mandeli, uh, Boel, Guienne. We just have so many different uh, collections of units here that are now pretty much shot up. The Spinola, the Stupa units. I don't know anything about these units, but they've got some really cool names, and it makes me actually want to look into the uh, the history of each of these different little units here. So let's go ahead and get out of this battle. That's unfortunate. We did our best. Now we need to do what you do in an AG odd game when this happens, and that is to re-equip ourselves uh, and get back into the fight as soon as possible. So I think Villarroa is going to have to run back to Milan. Uh, hopefully he can get, a get away from this Austrian general, because now he finds himself in a tough position. But we did take the western part of Carmona back, uh, close to Venice. I think we need to keep on going back, though. So I'm going to try and escape here. We need to try and escape. Got a lot of generals here that are working for us. But at this point, um, we just need to get the hell out of here and avoid all conflict if possible. So let's go ahead and play the passive posture. And we're basically retreating. Uh, retreating if we're engaged. In the meantime, I will take a look at our options, but I don't think there are many um, in one of these smaller scenarios. Any reforms or anything like that. Um, yeah, the King death of King James is currently unlocked, or, or locked, I should say. Of course, we've got a strategic view, a region view, the objectives view, which is going to give us the total casualties. And we've lost 17,330 men. That is a lot. Uh, and you also have a full explanation of the Italy scenario here if you want to look at it. Now, I hope Villarroa can run away. There's nothing we can really do at this point except pray that uh, he makes the right decision here. Don't want to enter military recruitment mode. All right, let's end the turn, guys. Run, lad, run! <laughs> Definitely think he's going to chase us. But he might just be content with staying at that fort. We're still going to have to go back and attack it eventually anyway. So that would probably be good enough for them at least uh, for now. And I'm actually thinking we might run to Bergamo. Because there's actually a fort in Bergamo. Which would be a lot safer for us. Oh, he's inching away like a turtle very slowly. Takes a while to get out of enemy territory, doesn't it? All right, there we go. He's a little bit faster now. So Villarroa might be able to get back to the supply depot at Lodi, which is not too bad. Um, no, he's not quite able to get there, but he will. He'll definitely make it there eventually, whether dead or alive. Unfortunately, I wish um, the Duchy of Savoy would join us, but they haven't joined us yet. Maybe eventually they will. You guys know how AG Odd games work. Um, you know, often your allies take a while to actually join your cause. It's all based on how things happened historically. Uh, occasionally, AG Odd does produce some alternative history setups. And obviously, if you play the Grand Campaign, a lot of different things could happen. Um, a lot of, you know, alternative options, etc. But for the most part, you know, you just have to kind of rely on what happened historically. In this case, I don't think we get many reinforcements. Uh, I think all we can do is just hope to survive, basically. Uh, let's take a look. The Savoyard Army. No, they're not ready to fight. The Mils de Piedmont. Nope. I hope I'm pronouncing these correctly. Uh, Musa will have to tell me. A lot of these are uh, Italian. Garrison of Torino. Okay, let's go ahead and end the turn. And once again, we're still 
limping back to Milan. You know, in these times, after major battles like this, that was pretty common to have to limp back um, to the area. But so far, I'm just loving the game. I, I hope you guys like the art style. I've always loved the age odd portraits. Uh, the combat system is always beautiful, beautifully drawn units. Um, and at this point, I just hope that I can succeed and win this particular campaign. As you, as you guys saw, the other campaigns are much, much larger than this one. Um, this is one of the smaller ones and probably the one I'd recommend for uh, any starting players.